All right, hello, I'm Dr. Sarkovica. I'm with Spooky Movie Television. And this is, this is Seve Chalet. again, I think, because he hit the camera and he banged around. He banged around. He's, <laughs> he's a professional. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with the, the director. And uh, are you also a producer as well? I am. Director and producer, are you also the screenwriter? I am. Director, producer, and screenwriter, Lord have mercy, a man with several hats and only one head for it, Mr. Seve Shalins. Did I say your name correctly? Yes, you did, Seve Shalins. What is your middle name? Uh, Carl with a K, very German. Oh, I like that. Do you know how to speak German even though you're from, you're from Canada, aren't you? I am from Canada, from Vancouver in British Columbia. I do not speak German. You don't speak German. Do you speak French? No, I don't speak French. You were just worthless in Canada, aren't you? So. Wow, that's a damn shame because if I was in Canada, I'd be trying to speak French, you know, Palm Freeze and, uh, and that lovely Pat LaBelle song, Voulez Vous Coucher Avec Moi. You'd fit right in. You'd be perfect. Yeah, I know. I sound very French. I got a wonderful accent already. Now, we want to talk about the movie Skew. Now, when you came up with this charming film, now, now, now what, what compelled you to, to create this particular story in this particular fashion? Um, well, originally wrote this thing in uh, 2004, mm -hmm. uh, shot in 2005. The idea actually came to me literally two days before a road trip. Uh, I thought to myself, I got to do a feature. I really got to do a feature. How do I do a feature with hardly any money? Mm -hmm which of course doesn't look very good, but can sell that idea. Well, sort of the found footage genre, you know, handheld camera. I figure I can fake a lot that way and the audience will accept it. They won't be looking at the film and saying, oh, oh, you know, that, that doesn't look like a Hollywood film. Mm -hmm. So the found footage genre, and you've probably seen a lot of these kind of films now, I think that allows these filmmakers to get away with these projects. Mm -hmm. So took a road trip and on this road trip for four days, real road trip I took, wrote the first draft of the script. Very rough draft. Took yes. me only four days. All came to me just like that. Yes. Another six months later, final draft is done. Six months later, pre-production, and then the rest is history from there. Now, now, now the story is specific. Now, now I'm not going to give away anything about the story, obviously, because I want you all to see it, because uh, I saw it. I like how you shook with... He, he, he was anything. He was cooperating the fact that I'm not going to give any spoilers or anything. Now, the particular story... Uh, uh, can you explain why, uh, well, why did it have to be a horror as, as opposed to something else? That's what I want to ask you, because, you know, horror films are just so, why can't they make a found footage comedy? This, this is a horror festival? Yes, it is a horror oh, festival. Oh, no, I did make a comedy. <laughs> so that movie that you made was a comedy? Oh, I must have failed. Oh, no, I, I laughed a couple of times, but it was one of those kind of nervous laughters when you yeah. kind of do like this. <laughs> Ooh, that kind of thing. Now, when I looked at the movie, I said to myself, yes, this is a found footage film and, and sort of like the same vein as Paranormal Activity, but I also noticed some nuances that were extra, that kind of pushed the envelope of what they consider to be an independent, you know, film. And so what I'm trying to say is how much money did you actually you know, get away with with a lot of the special effects. That's what I guess I'm asking. Uh, okay. Does that make sense? Because I tend to babble, and I don't know where I'm going half the time, but when I find that signpost, I get right to the right place. Uh, I'm going to step over here if you want to continue on. Yeah, don't carry on going. Uh, the, the effects. Okay, well, yes. let's just put it this way. The the actual production itself cost 25000 That's Ooh. just for the shooting. Got it done. Yeah. Got into post. Won't go to get into the numbers here. We're not going to get into numbers, yes. but yes. used a lot of favors, a lot of friends to help out. Yes. Um, professional visual effects artist mm -hmm. took five years to complete the visual effects because we wanted to get it done. Plus, they were doing it around their real jobs. Yes, so exactly, exactly. That's why it took five years to complete and finished it in 20, 2010. So. No, and now the actor. Now, where, where did you find your actors? Because a lot of these people that you see in these movies, you go, wow, they never should have ever, ever, ever touched a piece of celluloid, much less the digital camera. Why? How did you find these actors? Because they're very good, especially for the you know, the situations that they find themselves in, uh, visually speaking, because you don't always see their face sometimes. Like, how did you do that? How did you go about it? Okay, uh, speaking about the actors, we literally had open auditions. Mm -hmm. um, I would say 95% um, of the people that showed up were not 
that good at acting, surprisingly. <laughs> um, of the 5%, uh, we had stellar actors, the ones that you're referring to. I mean, they and were like the top. And like myself, I'm a stellar actor, yes. so I know what you're saying. It's difficult to find good actors, but carry on. Yeah, so when we got them, we had callbacks. They came back again, and they just nailed the scene. As a matter of fact, we had them all read for different parts. So <laughs> Rich read for Simon, and Simon read for Rich, mm -hmm. and it was pretty obvious who was going to get what role at that point. I was very impressed because there were, as I said a couple of times, when you don't really see some of the performers, and when you met up with them, uh, did, it, did you know in your mind, well, I need to have somebody with very expressive this, that, the others, people who knew how to, you know, gesticulate, I mean, without actually telling them what they need to do. <laughs> You're scaring me with the hand. I don't know what's going on. Yes, it's very, I'm very mesmeric. Yeah. Uh, a good question because uh, specifically the character, uh, the actor that plays Simon, mm -hmm. who holds the camera in the film, his mm -hmm. name is Robert Scattergood, mm -hmm. I had to sell him on the idea that you probably won't appear a lot in this film. You're the guy holding the camera. Right. You need to sell the camera as a character. I said, this is a huge challenge for an actor who's mm -hmm. not going to appear for the most part in the film. Are you willing to put in the two weeks of shooting and the time it takes to prepare yourself for the role? Mm -hmm. He hesitated. I'll be honest, he hesitated, but within a minute of hesitating, he, I think he just got it. He realized we've got something good here. He jumped on board, and he does sell the character. He does sell the camera. I've had so many people who, uh, the worst thing to happen with a POV film is they either A, get annoyed by the person holding the camera, not on purpose, meaning it wasn't written that way, or they just like, I don't like this film because it's all handheld. No one's ever actually came to me and said, oh, I don't like it because it's handheld. Because they don't feel like it's handheld. We don't do a lot of jerky no, stuff. No, you don't. Uh, when, you know? I, I, when I looked at the movie, I did not get any motion sickness whatsoever. Yeah. And I tend to like to get motion sick because, you know, I just like to get emotional and, and emotional and, and I just like being seasick is what I'm right, saying. Right. That's what I'm, I'm basically saying I like being sick in a movie. 